Hey, this is Sean Tyus. We're in my studio here in Switzerland. Um, we're going to be taking you through today some of the work I've been starting up on a new remix for a track called DNA by an artist W&W. &W. Um, and then after that, I'm going to show you how I did certain elements of certain tracks I've done in the past. Um, the lead on a track, uh, I've just finished a remix of a track called Verano and also the bass line from uh, myself and Simon Patterson's track, Something's Up, the bass line that comes in off the break. And a lot of people ask uh, how that bass was made. So I'm going to get cracking and uh, show you how all that was done. First thing I usually do when I get a remix is I'll go dive over into Recycle. Um, and this way I can get my loops and stuff like that because I love going into Recycle so that loops stay really, really rock solid. Every other sequence or Cubase, Logic, they have their little ways of doing this, but I still find the old school way of doing it with Recycle and breaking the, the, um, the loops into hits it works way better, and I'll explain why uh, when it comes into Logic. So I took two loops, basic Recycle files, and I will just export them now, just like so. So we got loop 4 and 17. So I'll go about jump into, give myself a new sampler instrument. I guess and if you're in Cubase, you would use, I mean, I use Logic uh, 8 and 9. Um, I say 8 and 9 because 9 is really, really buggy still. Um, so for this particular demonstration, I'm using 8 because uh, when I tested this morning, 9 was showing lots of uh, great signs. So yeah, we're just going to load a normal sampler, XS24. And if you're a Logic user, you know XS24 is more or less one of the easiest ways to go. Um, recycle convert, extract MIDI region, make new instrument. And what this does is it breaks your recycle loop into hits across your keyboard, making it really easy for you to also to rearrange a loop rather than cutting audio and whatnot. Uh, doing it this way is, in my opinion, way more efficient because not only do you get to do that, you get to do something else, which I'll show you in a sec. Uh, recycle exports. So now we have a loop in. So now the loop is loaded in the sampler. So. Very basic loop. But I, I don't really want the claps. The beautiful part about this is you could just take those notes out and you have it really, really basic. Then you could take, for example, a compressor to make the hits more, um, just make them feel a bit longer. So for that, I'll take the Waves Renaissance compressor. And it's really, really immediate too. I like this as well because this is one of the few compressors I know that you let you that lets you clip it without they actually got like the soft saturation effect on it. Like when it turns yellow you're good, when it turns red you're actually clipping, which is nice. So perfect. First, I guess I'll show you the, some of the parts that were given for the remix. The, um, the original track has a main lead melody that goes like this. So that's a pretty basic melody. I mean, everything's on straight eighth notes, very Dead Mouse style note placement. Um, but a lot of you have a lot of room to work here, and that's that's the main theme of the whole track. There's an intro off that goes. That's exactly what it is. Intro off. That'll actually work out really nice, putting in a cool effect on it or something. Um, bass line. This is going to be. It's a cool, definitely a cool thing, but I don't think that would really make much of a bass line. I'm going to take it more and use it as a, as a mid bass, like just a supplement for the, for the bass that I'm going to add in. Um, what other parts would be actually interesting? Uh, 
Okay, they're calling this an acid. I'm not really sure why that's acid, but um, it's a definitely a cool sound that I'm going to be using. And I've actually already laid that out in the track. So yeah, I have one track of just that pen. Mm, why is that loop still playing? So that's pan to the left, and then I took another copy of that and I actually reversed it and then shifted it over. So this way you have both. And it just creates a little, a little bit better of a stereo feel. So one's playing in forward and one's playing in reverse. Um, so I've already started loaded in basic stuff of mine, like basic kick. I don't know if there's anything on it yet. It's a basic EQ. Um, Basic closed hi hat, quick hats loop, and which I'm probably going to end up really, really side chaining. There's also, all these loops and stuff like that, they're all were recycle files. So you would have all these hits are at full velocity. The beautiful thing is, you don't have to, to cut audio and then uh, turn down volume, you can just turn down the velocity of the hits. It automatically makes these hits much, much more quiet. It doesn't interfere with the kick drum attack, which is what, exactly what we're going for. So much better this way. It's going to get side chained anyway, so when it's in, in the final thing. And then I'll really clean it up a bit. The kick has got too much bass on it. Let's see what else. Um, basic clap. The delay off another synth. Love to keep going. Offbeat bass. Very simple bass. We'll get back to the actually fattening that up when I start using the Renaissance bass plugin on the bass and the kick. And I got another mid bass here. And this one's gonna be really cool. Really like that. I love this plugin, Discovery. Um, it's not too many things it does amazingly, but it, what it does really, really good are like very, very cool phased bass lines. When you add, when you turn the chorus and the phaser together, it creates a really unique texture and uh, it, it brings life to a lot of your mid basses, which would be very static, uh, static otherwise. Um, then you got long hi hat, long open hi hat, and a really unique snare, which I'm probably going to layer like another kick over that. I mean, another clap over that because it's. Lacks a lot of high end and just needs a little bit more hiss on that. So we'll be definitely getting another one to layer over that. And then we have the electro loop. <coughs> so I guess we can start looking at the parts now and start bringing them in. We already brought the, the acid in. Okay. Always keep your parts really, really glued. Keep them nice. Oh, yeah. I think in a lot of other sequences you have other ways of doing this, but in Logic you just hit L and it loops the part infinite, uh, indefinitely until it hits something else on the track. Um, Cubase you can just duplicate parts really easy. It's all really the same, but I like to keep it, the, the parts really nice grouped big so that when you have to move sections of the track around, it becomes a little bit easier to do so. See, the cool thing about this, uh, doing the loops this way is that in the sampler, it's so much easier than just importing a rex file or a loop in where you have so much more control this way because you could change all the, t uh, the timing of the, the, the tuning. You could do filtering to each individual hit with an envelope as opposed to just filtering a loop completely. You could actually put an envelope on it and it's, uh, it's just so much better and you get really, really unique sounding percussion this way. Let's say, for example, we want to put a bandpass filter on a percussion hit. That's actually pretty cool, but I think it just needs extra hits. So we're going to use hits that we already have to fill space.
take that. back to that loop. It seems like it's going to be a bit problematic to mix that in. There was one other loop I had ready to go. Let's see what that sounds like in the mix here. Still, the best thing about Logic is its amazing sidechain routing ability to just always sidechain everything. I believe even Cubase 5, you can still only have one source of sidechain trigger. That's pretty weak. But the one thing about Logic, the reason I almost refused to even switch is because it's just so easy to trigger off so many. I always put, I don't know why it's always on track, track two, but I always put, um, I always take a kick drum. Um, it's actually the first thing I do before I even do anything. I'll take a kick drum and I'll put it in a sampler. I'll take the sustain to zero and make decay very, very small. So you only hit just basically a little bit of a tap. It's a very, it's not even a full kick. It's just a very quick, just the attack phase of a kick. Um, some people can, I mean, you could also use a closed hi-hat or whatever. Some people take a full kick drum. And I actually think that's wrong. I, um, I don't think really you should take a full kick drum because the, some kicks are shaped really funny and it'll, it'll trigger a compressor actually twice per kick drum. It's just easy to just, just make it very, very nice, tight cuts, and that'll make the, side, the compressor trigger here, and it's already releasing by the time what you really, really, where you want it to release for. You'll get a much better effect, and yeah. Um, so try to keep your sidechain triggers um, obviously muted. Don't, don't, um, don't use them as the one that you actually hear in the track. Always make one that's muted, and, and use that as your trigger, either a closed hat or a short kick. So now we have that triggering it. I don't like that one there. Okay, we've just rearranged the loop really. I mean, we've taken it, we've dropped the, the kick and the clap uh, velocities a bit, and now, it, now it'll fit in the mix a lot better. Not even too crazy about that other loop. Let me the game. Okay, we're back to the square one over here. Okay, for house people, this is probably going to be a little bit boring because it's just, um, it's not one of my nor more rolling basses, it's not one of the more rhythmic basses, it's just an offbeat bass line. This is going to fill the sub area. Um, what I normally do with the offbeat basses, and a lot of people ask how I get my basses 
be really, really fat and round, especially in the club. Um, the best thing to do is a plugin called by Waves called Renaissance Bass. Um, it's the most immediate to use plugin I've ever used in my life. Like, okay, it's a little bit the effect is too much there. I'll just down the volume. That's all right. And so it's still too loud. And then this can come. And just gets the it just normally gets the kick and bass to agree a lot more. Sometimes I use it on the kick, sometimes not. It depends on really the kick. But as you can hear the is that versus the big difference of bass. And let's see how it sounds in the kick. I'm curious about that. And the kick drums usually just low. It's the intensity is all, all different. Sometimes you actually lower the intensity to negative. Um, sometimes you have to raise it. it. Depends. But usually for kick drums, I find myself lowering it, and for basses, I push it up higher. And it's really that immediate. You don't have to do anything else with the other two um, sliders. Usually, it's usually for what for what our needs are, and we're trying to, to boost up the 80 hertz region, um, which is going to be the, the region that you're going to really feel in the club anyway. That's basically what you need. You leave the, the frequencies at the same, and it gets them to agree on that frequency, provided you're not like overlapping them. Um, as long as you're just, uh, if you have either the bass, bass either has to be side chain if they're going to play at the same time, or um, you do something simple like this where they're not playing at the same time. So that's that. Um, and this would be one. This would be our first mid bass we're going to introduce. This is not really any lead or anything like that. We just call it a mid bass because. Um, it's just a mid-range bass. <coughs> and I just use these things, I mean, I actually layer in sometimes two to three to four of them um, just to beef up the rhythm of the tracks. When it's just the kick and the offbeat bass, it's a little bit boring. So then I work this in, um, usually. And I still find that to be a little bit boring. Let's see. Let's make it more interesting and more moving. So put one of my favorite plugins, the uh, Ohm Force Ohm Boys on it. And this way it just creates a lot more motion to it. Definitely need a better clap loop. Uh, that's going to be layered in as well. Let's see, I should have ready to go. <coughs> I think that's it. Okay. Uh, I was interested in 12. And this is an easy clap to layer in and give it a lot more power.
So now we just turn off the bass. This is just messing. Let's get all our drums ready. So usually just to, I try to get try to sort out most of my drums and stuff like that before uh, I get cracking with all the melodic stuff, the bass and, and the pads and whatnot. Then, the, of course, in trance, you know, you have your, your very long, long reverbed, delayed uh, crashes and effects and stuff like that. So let's go hunting and see what we're going to be using for this particular track. Uh, I've already loaded in a crash. Uh, I think it was dry at the moment. But then, uh, so I'll take a crash. Fine. Delay. Add a stereo delay to it. So it's just give something for the, for the reverb to feed off of. And then, and then my favorite reverb plugin, the Art Acoustic Reverb. I don't know why it's my favorite. I haven't tried that many, but for me, it's always worked in the mix, so I just kind of stuck with it. So we're gonna, and we should have another sound effect to help with the crashes when the crash is not enough. That's gonna be a really messy noise, but can be cleaned up very, very easily. So we got, that's nice, clear out the bass end. Um, Fab Filter Volcano 2 has some really, really interesting things you can do other than, because obviously it's just a filter, but it's got some other things you can do on the phasers, uh, phaser, phaser, and fa phaser and flanger settings. Um, some really cool stuff. That you, could, you know, for a filter, it's pretty, that sounds pretty good. No. I think I'm going to go with that second setting, actually. And that sounds pretty good. And then we could just, then we could take that and then throw it ah, even better. I think this is to tons of reverb as well. Okay, that's basically long enough. That'll work cool for an effect, extra effect. And what be that? Sweet. So, way too loud though. Okay, cool. Um, I guess with the basic parts I have here. Yeah, I guess we could start kind of like piecing it together a bit um, and just doing the basic general skeleton and we'll just kind of add parts to it and carve it in as we go. So obviously we start the kick, keep it mixable for the DJs, very standard. I'm going to try to keep, get to the end of this part as quick as possible for you guys because this is the boring part of any track, the first minute. Actually, in fact, I'll just skip it completely anyway because everybody knows the way it's going to go. I'll come back and, do, and make the intro later. So. I actually don't even like that first clap anymore. Good enough, I guess.
No, we start with the fun stuff where we actually put the, all the track through tons of transitions and stuff like that as we build it and introduce other elements and things. So uh, I'm going to add a, another Volcano 2 off the Fab filter and put it on the master channel strip. This is, a, this is a question a lot of people ask me how to do the transitions and whatnot with the stuff, so I'm about to show you. Volcano 2. Um, for a setting, I just go with clean, start it anew, and then set it to high pass. So this way you can high pass the track as, you know, give it the impression that when it does drop on the next section of the track, it'll feel like the volume actually went up or it feels like the bass went up, but it doesn't. It's just that you filter off the bass for the whole 4 to 16 bars before. Um, I'll just show you. So. Hmm. Keyboard shortcut. There. Ah, uh, no wonder. Huh. There we go. I changed my keyboard shortcut for the automation button because it was really annoying when you hit it and it shuts off all the automation and I had to go. But either way, that's another tip for Logic users. You should change your keyboard shortcut for automation because there's no doubt that you probably hit the A quite often by accident. It's really annoying to get it all back. Filter one frequency. It's really easy, but I mean, most people don't even bother with master master effects and whatnot. I think it's there'll be the bus groups and stuff like that, but there's nothing wrong with filtering off the whole track. if you also chop some of the parts up. Take this, go with that. And as you get in, I just chop it off for like a kick, just a kick's length just before. Maybe the kick, bring two back. So we get our parts nice and neat. Okay, so now this should actually sit down pretty decent without the kick constantly going. Good, actually way better. I just have a little effect on it. Still some shit playing. Yeah, that should be better. Okay, we'll bring in the other, the intro ARP. No, it was the intro acid, I believe they called it. Bring in that now. Probably should bust them both together and make uh, and filter them and just filter them in. I guess a low pass filter in. As you can see, I use this volcano plug in a hell of a lot. Uh, it's, it's just so easy and it's really good. It sounds good. It sounds better than the filters on most of my synths. So right now I'm just automating the bus two, which is I've, I've routed those sound effects, the, the acids, to bus two, the forward and the backward ones. Um, bus two, I've put another instance of Volcano. So this way, now the way it works is that, that this way, they'll both get filtered by the same filter. And it'll just kind of help because the sound is kind of big and abrupt. So this way it kind of smooth out the introduction of the sound into the track. So this way we started with a very... 
You can barely even. I think they're already a little bit too loud anyway. Better. No, interesting. Okay, I gotta keep copying parts over. So now I'm going to create an additional uh, master effect um, on the master channel of a delay. Um, basically, it's the same kind of thing as if you're on a Pioneer DJ mixer and you're going to turn the delay setting on and just going to do the effect mix. It's pretty effective. Um, it saves DJ a lot of extra work to have to do it every time. So tape delay. We're going to just automate the mix of it. And shoot up over here. That sounds fine. I think there's a filter in a bit too and does that. And of course, with as like the other, as just like before, cut it at the better kick before or however you want to do it. I'll do one kick this time. The filter frequency of the master and filter resonance of the master. And of course, get the delay mix there. So, this, this is just what I, I leave on top of my, every one of my projects is um, all the automation for the master plugins. If I'm going to automate any master plugins or whatnot, um, I kind of leave them all up top and I leave them all opened up. So, this way you always see in your track which, which parts are going to be affected so you don't throw any particular sounds that are going to sound funny through these effects. Uh, like a vocal, which will kind of sound odd sometimes. Sometimes it works, though. Uh, let's see. So then, yeah, it should be yeah, too much of a delay. But. Yeah, that works. Okay. Okay, so now we'll start adding in elements of mine, I suppose. Uh, no, we actually still have a couple of loops to go. This first loop sucked, so we'll use this other one. Extra shaker loop in there, kind of sounds pretty cool. Uh, I think that's definitely going to be a keeper in the final version as well. I'm liking the way that adds a lot of groove for when it's just really kind of very tight and rigid to a little bit more swing to it. I like that weird effect in the back. Okay, cool. And did we get all the effects, all the other parts in already? Oh, we didn't actually. We still have an intro op, which I still put in for now. I'm going to use their part as a temporary placeholder. Uh, probably MIDI it up at another time.
So now I'll probably just do a quick, quick, short break. Um, using the, I save all my logic channel strips as channel strips, which is a beautiful thing because you can save synth with all the effects already on it uh, as a channel strip. And it's, it's kind of a really, really nice way to do it. So it's going to use a sub pad that I have, um, which basically just made for a really bassy pads. that. Yeah. We'll fix all that. As you can tell, I'm not the most trained piano player, but at least I know which ones to go back and change it to. Turn the kick off. It's a little bit too bright. I'm going to turn it down and make it a little bit darker. And that sounds a lot better as a cool sub. Um, at this point, we'll probably go back. It's probably a good idea to go back to the parts and see what else we have to work with here. There's really not that much else. It's just the lead, the acids. Yeah, this is all kind of the same. Just got that in there already. Yeah, that's acid. Which one is this? Oops, same exact one. That's it, basically. So now it's basically just. Uh, Wow, really not a lot of parts here. Easy to work with though, okay. Okay, so I'm thinking Maybe do a quick build up and then uh, bounce out to a more like aggressive acid type part. I'm guessing that would be the way to go. I'm looking for, actually, I'm looking for a sample bank I have made that that's more just like kind of reverbed and delayed out uh, effect sounds. It actually works really good for a lot of stuff. I just can't find it because I'm not really good at organization. Pitch them up a bit. Sounded fine, everything else is on that. Crap. And from that point, we'll go to try something like this.
back to the offbeat. Bring it back with this. So now I'm just trying to figure out a way to get out of this first little mini break. It's not really a big deal. I want you to find something that actually takes it up a level of energy. That's the whole point. somewhere so basically by filtering down that acid as well um, gonna give it the impression it's gonna jump back into position it'll sound better this way that would be cool in a second like an LFO, um, LFO modulated acid that I have set up over here. It's all done on the ES2. thing when you finally get it all together sound more like this Interesting. Gotta add something else. Let's try like a little pad as well. So maybe like a simple pad would be the way to go. Chop these notes up and quantize them a little bit, a little bit better. These are incorrect. These are correct.
ton of reverb on it too. With pads, you kind of always have to add a massive reverb, but this one doesn't need a ton. For that pad, we'll actually automate the filter cutoff to make it open up. Let it wait all the way to the end. Sounding good, except that this bass shouldn't be playing anymore. And apart from that, looking good. Start making little little tweaks and stuff to the actual main melody here now, and this way we get our theme for the break, and this way we can figure out how we're actually gonna move past and finish the the rest of the track. <laughs> 